If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Isaiah 56. I spent, uh, I got radically saved in 1997. I'm from Northwest Arkansas. Had a radical salvation in a college parking lot. I had gone into all drugs, all everything this world has to offer. And uh, uh, through a wild series of events where my friend lost his mind, he was weird. It culminated with him coming to Jesus. He got saved. I got angry. I'd, I'd put up with a weirdo for four months, and he gave his life to Jesus. I felt betrayed. Two weeks later, he shows up at college, and he takes me to lunch. And he said, uh, Corey, I was, for four months, he was seeing in the spirit realm. He was seeing angels and demons and see what was controlling people, and he could see that we were all being controlled by real devils. And uh, he says this went on for four months. It freaked him out. And we had been shut up in a little house, and the voice of the Lord broke in the middle of a party we were at. And the Lord said that Satan is raising up an army. He says, but I'm raising up an army too, and I'm calling you out tonight. I said, come on, Jesus. The choir's already breaking in. Turn it off. Oh, oh, okay. It's part of my message. Okay. I'm being stupid. <laughs> He said, Satan's raising up an army, but I'm raising up an army too. <laughs> and um, he's telling me this over lunch. I had just got my second DWI, and so I was in a rough place. And he said, Corey, you need to give your life to Jesus or you will go to hell. You know, and I just looked him in the face. I said, dude, how about you just shut up and take me back to school? I never want to hear about I don't ever want to talk to you again. He said, fine. So he drove back to the college parking lot, and he pulled into the parking lot right before I get out of the van. This is February 18th, 1997. I'm about to get out of the van, and I was sitting in the passenger side, and before I knew it, I felt a presence move from the right of my body to my left, and I began to shake violently like I was having a seizure. The power of God was hitting me, and he, and all of a sudden, I, talk, I saw a tug-of-war battle between light and darkness over my soul. He pulls in the back of the parking lot, and he goes, in the name of Jesus, I bind the Antichrist spirit. It manifested into a chokehold around my throat, and I could not breathe. So I knew I had to get out the name Jesus, but all I could get out was Jesus. And I kept trying to say, I went, Jeez, and it got tighter. Jeez, he got tighter. He's in my ear screaming, say it, say it, say it. Said, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> And I remember taking a deep breath, and with all the power inside of me, I just screamed, Jesus. And right when I declared his name, the hold broke off of my throat, and it was like God came and breathed into my mouth. And all I could say for the first five minutes, all I could say for the first five minutes is, I've got air, I've got air, I've got air. Well, my friend jumped out of the van dancing, running around the van saying, Jericho's falling down. Jericho's falling. I didn't know what Jericho was. I wasn't that deep in my biblical studies yet, but I'm just sitting there. I've got air. He's saying, hallelujah, walls coming down. And so then I hear a voice come as, in my mind as clear as day. And the voice says, get out of the van, get on the pavement, and give me your life, your mind. All right, I didn't meet the Jesus that wanted to say, give me a chance. <laughs> you know, I'll give you, make you rich and give you a lot of friends. He says, you've seen enough. Get out of the van, get on the pavement, and give me your life, your mind. So college kids running everywhere, and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, Jesus Christ, I give you my life, I'm yours. And in that moment, I passed from death to life. In that moment, I was forgiven of all my sins. In that moment, I became a new creation. In that moment, my dead spirit came alive with the power of God, and God took up residence in my dead spirit and I've now become the temple of the living God. I was delivered of all drugs, all addiction, all perversion. One touch of the raw presence of God. I went home that afternoon and I sat on my porch swing for two hours. Undone by how blue the sky was, how green the grass was, and how loud the birds were. It's like I had been dead for 20 years and I was alive. Well, within a month, I had a drug ring of friends that had encounters like that or bigger in their explosions. I ended up leading my little brother to the Lord who went crazy for Jesus in the high school. And over the next six months, we saw half the high school come to Jesus. We saw a church begin to host five meetings a week 
till three in the morning and I got a holy addiction for the presence of God. And I began to hang out with my, my best friend's mom and her best friends. These one, a couple of 50-year-old ladies and one 80-year-old lady. I'm a 20-year-old freak right out of the world. Had earrings, you know, everywhere. And, and I am hanging out my first two years with a couple of 50-year-olds and one 80-year-old. And those girls taught me how to pray. They said, you don't need your favorite song on before you start praying. You got tongues in the Bible. You got tongues in the Bible and you lay hold of God and taught me about early morning prayer and late night prayer and praying through when the burden of the Lord comes on you. And I cut my teeth with these ladies and I, I couldn't handle it. I got married to my beautiful wife in 1998, had our first daughter in 99 and the Lord began to consume me. God, I need to be in your presence eight hours a day. I, in a focused way, I want to pray eight hours a day. And so the Lord began to connect us with the ministry of International House of Prayer that was four hours up the road. And I moved up there December of 2000, one-year-old daughter, couple of years of marriage, and we were raising support at $500 of support. Rent was $540, and it sounded like a good plan. So we jumped in in December of 2000, and I never had, I never thought about ministry per se. I was happy to sit on row two, cry over Bible verses, ask God to send historic revival, and for Jesus to come back. That's what my sign up was, and I never graduate from that reality. And I moved there, and I got absolutely wrecked as we put our pinky toe into the river called the will of God, and God changed everything. You know, and I spent 18 years in Kansas City, 30 plus hours a week in the prayer room. And the Lord began to birth messages and birth a call to this generation to the place of prayer. And two years ago, the Lord began to burden me saying, I don't want to just do it in just side ministries. I don't want to just do it in the 24-7 reality, but I'm taking this to the church. And I'm going to begin to raise up praying churches in this hour. I'm going to raise up churches because I want to declare to you this is my word if you don't remember anything from my message this morning it's this the days of Sunday only Christianity are over it's over it's over the days of 45 minutes and 20 bucks they're over and this is going to shake everything the Holy Spirit was screaming to me in 2019, wineskins are changing. Wineskins are changing. I will not pour new wine into old wineskins. And I believe that at the crux of this shift is a deliverance from 45 minutes and then living the other six days and 23 hours of your week disconnected from God. Jesus died to remove veils to rend every separation and to bring us who were afar off into deep intimacy with his heart. To bring us into our governmental place as the ecclesia of ruling and reigning and releasing the power of God into the earth. Like I said, I spent 18 years in Kansas City and our director, Mike Bickle, had a life-changing encounter in 1982. He was in Cairo, Egypt. He was doing an around-the-world tour and, and going to some of the poorest places in the earth, asking for God's heart for the poor. And he was in his hotel room one night. This was September, October of 82. And he was praying one night, and the fear of the Lord filled his hotel room. He says he'd never felt an encounter like that before. And the Holy Spirit, he went into like a trance-like encounter, something similar to Acts 10 of what Peter encountered, and where he was aware of what was going on around him, but he was transfixed by the Lord and the Holy Spirit spoke to him and he says, I will change the understanding and expression of Christianity in the whole earth in one generation. I want to say that again. I will change. I will, which means the Lord himself, sovereign God, will change the understanding and the expression of the church in one generation in the whole earth. He knew that this was a twofold meaning. Number one, the church would begin to function different. Number two, the lost would begin to see the church different. 
The Holy Spirit spoke to him about four heart standards that have been lost. Intercession, holiness, offerings to the poor, extravagant giving. And number four, persevering prayer. And the Lord says, these heart standards I'm restoring. They're not the only heart standards, but these four must be restored. And then he said this, beware lest the brethren steal this from your heart. Intercession, holiness, extravagant giving offerings, and persevering prayer. And friend, I want you to know right now that we are in the middle of this shift. We are in the middle of this transition in the body of Christ. And just bring it down just a touch. I want you to hear me. I don't want you just enjoying nice music. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. We are in the middle of a great reformation. I want you to understand this. The earth is in transition. The earth is in transition. Jesus likened it to birth pangs in Matthew 24. And we, I believe 2020 was a transition into a new era. We are never going back to normal. You may want it. Heck, I want it. I never want to deal with these masks ever again. I never want to have to deal on an airplane or anything. I'm not talking, I talk, we've moved into a different mode. And it's not about ever going back to what you ever understood as normal. It's going to take a greater intentionality with God and each other. The Lord gave me the, the verse out of Jeremiah 12 at the beginning of last year. If you've run with the footmen and they wore you out, how will you do with the horses in the floodplain of the Jordan? Which means if you were worn out last year, you ain't seen nothing yet. Which means we have got to get delivered from doing Christianity in our own strength, our own wisdom, and our own resources. And we have to move into a greater dependence and unity with the Holy Spirit. I believe that our way forward are prayer rooms and dinner tables. That Hebrews passage is, as the day approaches, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. Corporate is the answer for the escalating day of the Lord. Coming together around God and coming together for deeper breakthroughs within each other. Plastic Christianity will not survive this next season. Shallow in Christianity will not move into this next season. Living on the fringes won't allow it. It's going to take a greater intentionality. And that's why I love Isaiah 56, verse 7. Isaiah releases a prophecy 3,000 years ago about what's going to ultimately, and when Jesus returns, this is ultimately when Jesus returns and what his house is called in the next age. But the spirit of that reality is already at work in the earth right now. Isaiah 56, verse 7. He says, even them. Oh, my goodness. I got to turn there so I can read it. Everybody say, even them. Even them. Say, even them. even them. He says, I will bring to my holy mountain and I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. He says, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house. Everybody say, my house. My house. Say, my house, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Three things I want to highlight out of this verse. Number one, there is an invitation to the even them. The days are over to where we look at only the holy ones or the elite ones or the stage people who are called to the place of prayer. There is an invitation being given to everyone from the least to the greatest, from the smallest to the big. It doesn't matter. Walls are being broken down. He is declaring you. He's saying it's time to come out of living in bondage to your recent shame and failure last week. Some of you screwed up royally in 2020, and I can hear Jesus, even you. Even you. There's an invitation for you to come up into God's holy mountain, for you to come into a place of greater intimacy and accessibility to the heart of God. Even you. He's seen a lot harder cases than you. You're not that big of a deal. He's got you. He's going to bring you. Can you stop worshiping your issues and worship God? He says, even them. 
I will bring to my holy mountain. And here is the amazing thing. He says he's going to make us joyful in his house of prayer. Everybody say joyful. When most of us think of prayer, you don't think joy. You think the discipline and the duty and the, uh, 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 uh. And God says, oh, I got a secret for the generation. That the primary look on everyone's face in the prayer room will be this. Joy is coming to the house of prayer. Joy is coming to prayer rooms. Joy, gladness, song, worship and rejoicing in our King. The beautiful God is going to break in and we're going to see an explosion of joy. Remember Ravenhill would always say that entertainment is the devil's substitute for joy. We're going to see joy overtake our prayer rooms. I believe he's going to do this in three ways. Number one, new views of God are coming to the church. The core issue when you talk about prayer is this. Who do you think you're talking to? Who do you think you're talking to? Most of us view an angry God, a disappointed father, an agitated father. Hey, when are you going to get this together kind of father? But I want you to understand that you are dealing with the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the father of great gladness, great goodness. He is beautiful. He is exhilarating. He is fascinating. There's no one like him. And to awaken joy in the house of prayer, we need the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of God. We need new views of God to fill the church. No, no, put, just turn the piano down. I want you to hear me. I don't think you hear me. We need the spirit of revelation. We need an awakening of who do you think you're talking to. Your prayer life will rise or fall based on how you answer the next question. Who is God? What's he like? How does he feel? What do you look like to him? The most important thing that you will ever think is the thought that comes into your mind when you think of God. Yeah, let it mess with you. Let it get up into your business and never actually think about Him. Who is He? What's He like? I believe that the revelation of the beauty of God is about to fill the church. He is not a middle-class working dad with seven billion children. He is an inexhaustible treasure house of all goodness, all glory, all power, all gladness. Do you know God is mostly glad, not mostly sad? Do you understand what that little truth will do to your psyche? <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to get joyful in the house of prayer because we're going to see him different than we've ever seen him before. Instead of the God who's sitting at a checklist saying, are you going to get here? Check. Check. Did you get in here? Check. He's going to say, oh, you can't help but get into my presence. <laughs> Psalm 16 says, in his presence is fullness of Well, I don't know boring people that have joy in their presence. I don't know ugly people. Does anybody like in here hanging out with ugly, boring people who don't like you? And yet, we've bought into lies concerning the nature of God. Number two, he's going to anoint musicians and singers. And prayer and worship is coming together in a profound way. I don't have time to go into this this morning. But the spirit of the tabernacle of David is coming upon the church. 4,000 musicians, 288 prophetic singers released of all their duties. And David commanded them to prophesy on their instruments, to prophesy with their voices, and to prophesy with their sounds. And that God's throne would descend over the nation as the song. God is enthroned in the praises of his people. 
And God is bringing together the songs and the music and the prayers in this hour. And our prayers are going to ride on the melodies and on the rhythms. Spirit of Tabernacle of David. That's what the Lord spoke in the early days. 24-7 prayer in the spirit of the Tabernacle of David. And he's going to do it. John 16, Jesus says, you're going to ask the Father and he's going to answer you and your joy will be full. Answered prayer is going to be, this is what I love it right here. Answered prayer is what makes you happy. Unanswered prayer is the training ground for unbelief. We get so used to never seeing prayers answered, we don't expect it. And that's why I love it that we're going to see cancers leaving bodies, blind being healed, deaf being healed, God breaking droughts, God pushing away storms. So much to talk about. The church at the end of the age is going to be a praying bride. One of the last verses of your Bible says, the spirit and the bride say come. Before the Lord returns, we're going to see the Holy Spirit and the church come into unity with one another. The church is going to come into a bridal identity. And the anointing of prayer will be the primary anointing on the end time church. Do you know why Jesus is going to return? It's because we want him to. It's going to be a lovesick bride across every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. Come. Come. Thy kingdom come is more than good revival services. It's the literal coming of a kingdom. The kingdom is already and it's not yet. And we're crying for that kingdom to break in. The literal kingdom, the literal throne of God back on the earth. And we're going to see the Holy Spirit in the church come into unity. Holy Spirit is coming. And he is going to confront so he can conform us into the image of Jesus. And you will only unify with the Holy Spirit to the degree you submit to the Holy Spirit. We only, submit with each, we only unify with each other to the degree that we submit to one another. A bridal identity. We're going to see God differently and we're going to see ourselves differently. We're not workers at a distance. We are a bride who is joined with his heart, joined with his will, and joined in the release of his kingdom into the earth. God wants to train you men in your bridal identity. Which simply means this, learning how to become a receiver. God wants to teach us how to receive. Because you can only give what you've received. A new name is coming to the church. The new name is Hephzibah. Isaiah 62, what he's going to give to Israel, we get to partake of right now. He says, in that day, you're going to get a new name, no longer forsaken, no longer desolate. Your new name will be called Hephzibah, which means this, the Lord delights in you. And the very next verse, it says, as God rejoices, he goes, as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. And the very next verse is, I have set watchmen on your walls. Oh, Jerusalem, they will never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Oh. Luke 18, just write it down. Jesus gave us a parable about how a widow overcomes an unjust judge. And Jesus says, if she can overcome him, how much more do you think the bride, the elect, look like before the righteous judge in seeing breakthrough, seeing justice break into your lives, your cities, your families? God will avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night. All right, start it back up. You're like, man, I don't know what to do without the piano here. 
It's a different mood. Sometimes we can just enjoy the music. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I want you to hear me. There is a shift. And why am I here? Because I believe that God has placed his hand on Vlad, Lana, the team here. On Hungry Jen to be one of these praying churches. To, to awaken pray, praying churches across the earth. We're at the beginning of this right now. It's just the beginning. And we want to call a whole generation up the holy mountain into encountering God. I want every one of you in here, in here and those that are viewing, I want you to know God longs to see your face. And God longs to hear your voice. And no one can sing your song but you. And no one can pray your prayer but you. He didn't die for a couple of pastors. He wants to talk to you. Heaven's coming. Anyway. I believe 2020 exposed prayerlessness in the church. Everybody said, if I had more time, then I'd pray. Well, you got more time. Did you pray? Lord, we binge on this and binge on that and spend 45,000 hours because our iPhones told us on endless comments in Facebook and debates over this and over that. 2020 exposed prayerlessness. And I love God. He's so kind. He gives us pop quizzes to say, you're not as awesome as you think you are. It's okay. I'm going to get you there. Holy Spirit's the glad worker. He loves his job. And he's going to get us where we need to get. But I believe that God wants to deliver us from how we're medicating our souls when pressure comes. Luke 21, 34 is a very important verse. Jesus' last public message. And he lays out all the events of the end times. And you would think he would say, now get this much water, these many guns, and this much toilet paper. But Jesus says this in Luke 21, 34, take heed to yourselves. Pay attention to the state of your heart. He says, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the cares of this life. He says, you don't understand that when pressure comes, people look to medicate, to insulate, and to anesthetize their hearts from pain. We want a shield. We need a, a break. We need to disconnect. I know it. You know it. We live with a thousand options daily vying, saying comfort here, comfort there, comfort there. And Jesus says, really pay attention. Pay attention to what you're medicating your heart with because many hearts are going to be weighed down in that hour and they're going to be dull and insensitive and unable to navigate the day rightly and to be able to move into that next season. He says, watch and pray. Watch and pray that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man and to escape all these things. I want a buoyant heart in God. I want to be joyful in my God. I want to be delivered from the seductions and all the voices and all the stuff saying, I'll give you a break. Yet it lies because it does it. It actually enslaves me. Jesus, Jesus, he is giving a call to the body of Christ across the earth. Come. That's what Jesus said. He goes, in light of the end times, this is what you do. You get your eyes open, which means get the spirit of revelation on your life and get a prayer life. Get a, get a heart filled with faith and get your eyes opened. That's Jesus's two greatest commodities of dealing with the last days. Get a vibrant prayer life and get a spirit of revelation. I believe that he's calling hungry Jen to be one of these light posts. It's going gonna, it's gonna to gather, I love it, thousands locally, millions across globally. Amen? There's much more that I could say. We're going to have more times together. But I tell you, this is, I am more excited about this right now because we're in the middle of the transformation. 
And there are five wise and five foolish virgins in those last days. And I believe that God wants to raise up oil rigs in the church again. Places where we gather together corporately. Here's something else I want to say. I love my personal quiet times. I love sitting on my back porch. I mean, you guys got beautiful scenery around here. But I love my back porch. I love my favorite cup of coffee, my favorite worship song, and nobody bothering me. I love my personal life, but the spirit of Joel 2 is you need to come off your islands of how you like to do it and gather in the same room and cry out to me. There is a level of fullness that is not known individually. It's known together with all the saints. Jesus. Jesus. Revelation 5 says that bowls are going to be full. All right, let's stand. Hallelujah. Just open up your hand right now. It won't go long. Even you. Even, say it, say even me. God, I bless this house. I thank you for this house. I, I thank you for the diversity in this house. I thank you for the all nations that you're bringing together here. There's going to be a John 17 unity upon this house. Psalm 133 unity upon this house. That they, Father, would be one as you're in me and I'm in you. That they would be one in us. The world would believe that you sent me. The glory that you've given me, I have given them. Fire, fire, fire. God, we ask you to release it today. I, I bless Hungry Jim. I bless this house. Uh, uh. Thank you, God, for Vlad, Lana. Thank you for the team here. I was with them last night. We had a small dinner. Vlad didn't eat. But I went back to my hotel room after being with them for about an hour and I had fire just rolling up and down my body for about an hour and a half. And I'm like, who are these people to you, Jesus? Who are these people to you, Jesus? He says, I'm going to do something special here. I'm going to do something special. I bless this house. And I pray right now for the holy invitation to be given to everyone's spirit. Even you come to my holy mountain. Even you come to my holy mountain. Come out of your shame. Come out of your fear. Come out of your guilt. Come out of the lies and the accusations and the torment. Come out. And come to my holy mountain. I will make you joyful. I will deliver you from all the other substitutes. You will fall madly in love with me in my presence. I bless this house. I declare the release of the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Open eyes, I pray. Open ears, I pray. Awakening. Spirit of awakening, touch this house. Release it, I pray, in the name of Jesus. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. Holy Spirit, we honor you in this house. Holy Spirit, we adore you in this house. Awaken the God cry on the inside of us. Come. Come to me in intimacy. Come near me in revival. Come for me at your coming. 
We love you, Jesus. For those of you, maybe that this message was for you and you realize God is calling you back to prayer. You've abandoned the secret place. And today you feel the call. I want you to come out of your seat right now and stand right here. We have about 10 minutes. If you need to come back to prayer, if you need to come back to morning prayer, come back to fasting, I want you to come. And I want you to right now answer the call. God is calling you. God is calling you. Even you. Even you. Even you. We're going to be a praying church. We're going to be a fasting church. We're going to be a church hungry for the presence of God. You come. You come. A house only for you. Come, make me a house dedicated to you, consecrated for you. Oh, that you would come and fill us with fire. Oh, make me a house, a house so you can come and move it. Oh, a house that you can fill with your Holy Spirit. Hey, make me a house. Oh, prayer come and fill us with your fire come and fill us Let the fire on my altar never burn out. Let the fire on my altar never burn out. Let the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Let the fire. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my May the fire on my altar never burn. Let it burn. Let it burn for you, Lord. Yes. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn. May the fire on my altar never burn. May the fire never burn. Make me a house of prayer. For you to come and dwell, Lord. Oh, blessing and honor, glory and power be to the Lamb who sits on the throne. Oh, oh blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the Lamb. Who sits on the throne? All blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. All blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. All blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. All blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. A blessing and honor, glory and power. Make me a house, oh Lord. Make me a house, make me a house. 
Come and altar right now. Come with your glory. Let your fire never die out, Lord. In Jesus' name. Oh, Lord. 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 Oh, God wants you to rebuild your altar. God wants you to come back to Him. Every kind of myth, every kind of deception, the prayer is somehow boring, that somehow it's, it takes time, it saves time. That joy that's going to be released right now into your life, that joy that's going to be released even you, even you who disqualify yourself that that's not for you. The early hours are not for you. The all night thing is not for you. You're too cool for this. You're too sin. You're too much of a sinner. God is calling you back right now begin to return to him begin to return to him on your zoom begin to return to him on your youtube in jesus name in jesus name as people are receiving prayer right here right now everybody else i want you to bow your head and close your eyes for just a moment if you don't know jesus christ as your personal lord and savior if you need to get saved right now if you need to come back to the Lord, maybe you're watching us on live stream or perhaps you are in this facility and you say, Vlad, I need to get saved today. I need to come back to God. I'm not there where I'm supposed to be with God today. If Jesus is to come today, I'm going to burn a lake of fire. I am being tormented by demons right now. I need to get saved. If you are that person right now, whatever you are standing, where you already, maybe you're already at the altar or maybe you're here in the sanctuary or perhaps you're watching us on live stream i want you to slip up your hand if you're saying i want to get saved today i need to get saved today i need to give my life to jesus thank you young lady i see you i see your hand there anybody else who say i need to get saved today i'm not right with god i need to give my life to god today i need to come back to jesus today I need Jesus to forgive me of my sin. If you're watching us on live stream, you can comment below and say, I need to get saved. And our team will connect with you right now. If you raised your hand or you wanted to raise your hand, I want you to pray this prayer out loud with me. Church, let's help them say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sin. And wash me with your precious blood. I surrender my whole life to you. And from this day forward, I'm going to follow you in Jesus' name.